a big hitting downhill e-mountain bike riding up some super technical single track unheard of only four or five years ago now mid-travel e-bikes on the other hand have been around for quite a long time but given the choice which would you choose the 180 mil travel bike or the 150 mil which is better which is faster but which one are you going to go and buy Both the Levo and the Canevo have been through some pretty hefty days out in the mountains with us. The Levo in around, up and down, some of the tallest, most remotest mountains in Europe. The Canevo, on the other hand, has been known to hang out on some pretty terrifying jumps and downhills. Now the biggest difference you might think between the two bikes is actually the suspension travel. The Levo has 150 mil, whereas the Canevo has 180. But if you look at that on paper, the 30 mil difference is really, really very little. No, one of the biggest differences is actually the frame sets. Each have their own personality, their own flex and stiffness characteristics. They ride and have a composure which is different to each other, and they both react differently to different types of terrain and also the different types of rider input. There are many things that contribute to this feel, this personality. Like I said, the way the bikes are built, the compliance and stiffness is all about the materials and the way they are constructed. Not only does the Levo behave differently to Canevo, but a carbon Levo will behave differently to the alloy one. But there is also the matter of geometry. Right, the geometry numbers then. Head angle, 64 degrees versus 66 degrees. Lazier, versus livelier. The C tube angle, 77 degrees versus 75 degrees. Now this has an effect on your position whilst climbing. Now the chainstay figures on both bikes are actually pretty close, 454 millimeters versus 455. What the chainstay does is gives you a balance between the front and rear center of the bike. So in that respect, the both bikes are actually pretty close. Now the wheelbase gives you the stability on the descents. The Levo has a 1235 millimeter wheelbase, whereas the Canevo in size S4 has a monster 1295. And if you're tuned in, you can instantly feel those geometry differences the moment you get on the bike. The Canevo feels long, it feels slack and lazy. As you get on the Levo, it feels tighter, narrower and more upright. But it's not just about sitting on the bikes getting that feel, it's all about how they behave when you're out on the trail. Now some of the main geometry numbers of these two bikes is actually pretty similar. No, the biggest difference in the geometry is actually in the sizing. Now, the Levo uses the traditional small to extra large system, whereas the Canevo uses specialized system they use on the demo, which goes from S2 up to S5. So what does that mean in practice? Well, the bikes are radically different in size. If you take a size large Levo, this weighs in at 455 millimeters in reach. And remember, there's one more size on top of that. Whereas the S4 Canevo is actually 495 millimeters in reach, and that still has one more size above it. So big, big differences here in the sizing. But the question you guys want answering is what size should you choose? Well, that depends on a lot of factors such as adaption, what bike size you've been riding in the past, and also whether you've had any experience of riding other size mountain bikes. But remember, those numbers can actually be manipulated in such things as the bar and stem, the bar width, the position of the seat. They can all be adjusted to make the bike fit different. And remember, fit is different to size.
Now I know a lot of you guys are going to be agonizing over what's better, 150mm or 180 but it's not just about what's better, that both bikes are simply different. Take for example this downhill single track here, now I'm sure both bikes are very capable in this environment, however if you go from an angle which is like this to one which is like that, then obviously the Kinevo, the longer wheelbase, and a slacker head angle is going to be better. The same applies when it comes to road gaps, I mean this is a tiny gap compared to what Chris Smith can do on any mountain bike, but if road gaps and downhill tracks are what you're all about, then maybe the Kinevo is the bike for you, but remember it really is a full-on downhill machine. So like I said, it's not necessarily that one is better than the other, they're just different, although having said that, lower, slacker and longer is better for a downhill situation, whereas slightly steeper and higher is going to be better for more all-round riding. For example, in a situation like this, if you want to pick the bike up from here to there on a slightly flatter track, then obviously the Levo is going to be more lively than the Kinevo, but that is also down to the suspension and the suspension tune on the bike. Now, luckily both these bikes are actually quite lively in their suspension design. Oh, one difference which is pretty major is the fact that there is a coil shock on the back of the Kinevo, whereas the Levo is air front and rear. Now remember too that the componentry on each bike is going to give it a specific feel. For example, there's a dual crown fork on the Kinevo which is going to be slightly sturdier in those big collisions, whereas the single crown fork on the Levo is going to give it a slightly livelier ride in a more all-round environment. But no component is going to have a bigger effect than the wheel size. Now there are certain characteristics to wheel sizes irrespective of what bike we're talking about. Now, 27.5s, they're going to have a livelier feel compared to the 29. You could argue at the same time, you could possibly build a stronger wheel at a 27.5. Uh, and the 29 inch wheel is well documented that the bigger wheel is going to roll over those roots and rock sections a little bit easier than the 27.5. But when it comes to speed, you can't really say that one is faster than the other. Like I said, it's all about feelings. Now, I mentioned earlier that you could actually change the fit to these bikes. The Kinevo actually comes with an integrated stem and 800 mil wide bars, whereas the Levo's got a traditional bolt-on stem with 780 mil bars. So when you sat on the bike in the showroom, you will definitely feel a difference between the two bikes. And remember, you can't actually get as much steering lock on the Kinevo as you can on the Levo. Loads of other things that are similar on these bikes, got a seat dropper, got 1x11 gearing, got 200mm rotors, and that big question, does one bike go up hills quicker than the other? Nah, it depends what mood you're in. So in the final analysis, there is no doubt that when it comes to those big collisions, the gravity-based riding, a 180mm travel e-mountain bike is going to take the hit slightly better than the shorter travel bike. Now, when it comes to trail riding, a lighter 29-inch wheel bike with a single crown fork, whether it's a Levo or any other bike, is going to be more suited to that type of environment. Now, I know what you're thinking, I've gone all the way through this video, I've not even spoken about the motor and the battery. Well, both bikes have got a 700 watt hour battery, the same Bros Drive S Mag motor in there with 90 newton meters of torque uh, and three levels of assist. Um, and that's about it. I mean, guys, let us know your thoughts. I mean, the conundrums you might be in, whether you choose 150 or 180, let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN to see more uh, e-mountain bike videos. In the meantime, if you want to have a look at some wilderness riding in the mountains, check out the one I do at Hannah Barnes, Into the Wild here, and Chris Smith on the big hits, the big jumps, Enduro versus Kinevo. Down there.